This is Soy. And this is Dyra. And you're listening to Hair Hair and Whatever. Whatever. Unfiltered Salon Talk. Hey y'all, so this is Soy and I am Dyra and you're listening to Hair and Whatever and today we have special guest Lisa Pope. Yay, Lisa in the house. (laughs) (laughs) Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. I am Lisa Pope, one word, that's a running joke because everybody calls me Lisa Pope since I was two. So nobody (laughs) knows me by anything other than that. But uh, I'm Lisa Pope. I have been um, in the beauty industry my entire life. Mm -hmm. So I think I was born doing hair. Um, so, um, I come from a family of hairstylists, so I've been in the salon literally my entire life. So professionally, I've been styling hair for 30 years now. You got me, girl. Yeah, 30 years, 1989, 1989, yeah. So, um, you know, I've just been, it's been a passion of mine forever and Mm -hmm. I've been able to, uh, to live my passion through the beauty industry. So I do hair, I do makeup, I do styling. Um, fashion is actually one of my passions. You passion. do everything. I do, I do. So mm-hmm. my catchphrase is beauty is my business and fashion is my passion. So, I love that. Hey, that's what I do. That's me. At least hair, hair stylist unite. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so um, tell us a little bit about like the whole, um, you know, your celebrity kind of like hairstylist and like you know what you do we got to talk about the topics though first right oh we're gonna go okay okay right because i was gonna say i'm the unfamous hairstylist and i like it that way (laughs) so So, what what are we talking about (laughs) today we're talking about um of course we're going to talk about um hairstyling and um she's done a couple of celebrity um guests or clients Mm -hmm. and we're going to talk about how long do you wait for your partner to get it financially to together so that's a really huge one right Mm, ladies yes yes but first we're gonna get into our crown of the week and our crown of the week is lizzo Look at extra fly. She's on the cover of, of Essence. Essence. She's giving us, oh, I'm isn't here that? For it. I love it's right. it. I mean, she's giving us like Afro puffs Absolutely. with some right. like locks going yes. on with some jewelry. I mean, yeah, she's like just she has it. some some earrings, like you know, with some like cage band. Yeah. I love the pink Looks on like the cover. Are, um, yeah. On the cover of Essence, Essence. like yeah. family of color. That's right. Looks I love it. It's amazing. Beautiful. And, and her I, nails too. Her nails are cute too. So now, who is she? And she's an artist. I love her music. A visual, a musical artist. Got it, got it, got it. Yeah, yeah. she's like, she has a couple of songs out, and she's extra, extra dope. I love her. She's beautiful. She is. Okay, so we're going to get into it, right? Um, Celebrity hair (laughs) style. Um, I mean, you're into everything. I do. You know, so it's not like just a celebrity hairstylist. So can you tell us more so, like, um, tell us about exactly what you do? I know you went in briefly about, like, you know... um, who you are yeah. but let us know so the interesting thing is and and it's a it's a running joke in my small circle because I, I say that we have a closed circle where, mm-hmm. I, where I work and in my professional world and partly that's because the people that I serve this I say that I service your soul mm. so it's bigger than me just doing your hair crowning your face yeah so in my life I've learned in my own self-development as the years progress, and I'm 47, I'll be 48 in November. Yeah, yes, so I have a 20. <laughs> thank great, you. Girl. But I have a 27 year old daughter, so we've been through the fire. Yes, she'll be oh 27 in a couple of weeks. Wow. And um, so I've learned that people come and they come and they unload mm-hmm. in the salon space. And I don't care who they are, whether yeah, it's a celebrity. Or, so I realized that I was bearing burdens that were not my own, mm-hmm. and I had my own stuff that I had nowhere to 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 deliver or mm-hmm. to expose. And um, so when I learned that, I started to close my circles. So soy knows, and people know that I have this thing that I don't take new clients. I haven't taken new clients in right. over 10 years. I have another Silas friend. Is she's yeah. the same way. It's I think the I most amazing thing that, ever. That she doesn't, yeah. yeah. But partly it's because awesome. of that. The yeah. other part is because I have clients that just won't go away that are like, nope. Well, um, I'll be no here one, forever. No like, one else is yeah, touching my hair. Yeah. So Which is, you know, I get it. To... I'm the same way about my dentist. I just had to find a new dentist. And I'm like, <laughs> this is the most intimate relationship you will ever have. <laughs> your hairdresser and your dentist. Right. right. All really up is. in your hair yeah. and all up in your mouth. mouth. And yeah. your gynecologist. Yeah. Yeah, that too. Well, I mean, I'm almost all right with the gynecologist. As long as, it, you know, like that. Eh, I don't know what has happened to us <laughs> at the time. That we are a little freer with our vaginas than we are with our teeth. <laughs> 
But I don't know. It's almost like the things, the flaws that we have, Mm -hmm. we don't want everybody to know about them. So with that being said, I'll say that the celebrity clients in my running joke also is that I'm unfamous and I like it that way. So Mm -hmm. I don't publish a lot of the clients that I service or the things that I do. I do somewhat for the looks when I get excited about stuff. But for the most part, I don't want to be known as a celebrity hairstylist. And that's because I service souls. Yeah, but that's because I service souls. And the people that come, they get more than just what you see when you see them on the street. And they share and all of that. So it becomes a very intimate situation. So one of my most recent, it's funny that she's um, like borderline making me famous because she's becoming famous and mm-hmm. she don't want it either is our um, city of Atlanta mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms okay, okay. Keisha Lance Bottoms I have Bottoms. been serving in Keisha in the salon for over eight years her her mother her husband her kids like the whole family wow yeah so I'm a barber as well so I barber for our Atlanta Hawks um, team for the past six you? seasons yeah so you go to the games you see the, the they um, do the shape ups and I stuff. do everything you know, yeah I do, our, I do everything absolutely boys love girls Girl barbers, barbers. They I need to, especially I need when, to you're nice. when, when you're nice. When you're nice, when you're nice, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm a tomboy, so yeah, yeah, you absolutely do. I know how to and do it's, like it's so crazy. I know how to do white guys, mm-hmm. but I don't know how to do black men. No? Yeah, it's a it's no, a little I different. Give, uh, Christian, a, a shape of <laughs> yeah. See, you, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know how to do it. I want to learn. Yeah, yeah. You should definitely. It's a it's a and and it creates a very like I said when you service in souls because our brothers are we I call myself my brother's keepers. Right. So the same thing is going on there that we didn't really realize. The salon space has become a, a mecca for for community health, yeah. for everything yeah. that goes on in our community. It's so, so it becomes many, a very like, sacred place. That yeah. Happen, and yeah, that's why we wanted to do this. Because yeah. It's like, Absolutely. You know, bring the salon talk to kind of like radio because Absolutely. it's like or podcast because like that's what it is. It is. It's like it's a, a sanctuary. It is. It's a sanctuary. Yeah. It yeah. absolutely is. And it's so to take deep. on that responsibility is a big responsibility. I, I see a lot of um, stylists that you know just kind of just making it getting it however they're getting it because you're right. grinding for money right and, and you're not doing it for the passion exactly and the and interesting thing so is when i work for money because i did it too of course mm-hmm. like come on now i worked for money when i did i spent out and i realized i'm like i have nothing to show for all of this money and time that i spent right. and time away from my family and time just spent in the salon and i have nothing to really gain from it a few little you know Positive things, of course, but for the most part, it, it taxes on you. And so for right. me, I just kind of, as I matured, I just kind of made some real different decisions. And those different decisions actually have taken me into places that I never would have dreamed of going. Because I never wanted to be, you know, people always like, are you going to own your own salon? Absolutely not. I grew yeah. up in a salon. My dad right. owned a salon. Like, absolutely so not. So you own your own salon? No. no I have a studio that I work out of that's a private studio that's just myself there. I love it. Yeah. So yeah, I've never like had the desire. Suite. That's it is. like what we are. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know that. I thought you had a whole salon. Mm-hmm. I used to. Oh, yeah. And see? it was very stressful. Yeah. Yeah. Very, it's, very too much. Stressful. yeah it's too I, much. I think, like, you have to have, like, someone that's running it if you're going to be the creative absolutely. person. And absolutely. And they need it's to be the one that's just, like, the business. The business, the yeah, side yeah, yeah, yeah. It it's a lot. Otherwise, it'll stress you to hell. And out. I think that a part of our accountability, especially in black salons, is to groom the next generation of stylists because yeah. they out of control. Right. Yeah. They have no sense. I mean, <laughs> oh, I have the basics. All the time. We have yeah. a, a segment oh, called call, Calling call You Out. out because Absolutely. It's ridiculous. I love it. I look Putting modest ass on people's <laughs> yes. head and all type of yes. stuff. You know, yes. I can't handle it. It is absolutely, but it's yeah. necessary. And I think that what happened with us, or at least with myself, we had that, that previous generation. Like my dad schooled me, like before I even went to cosmetology school, right. I had the same cosmetology teacher that taught my father. Oh, wow. So when I came, so yeah. Yeah, oh, and they so your were. Father did hair. He too? absolutely did. Like, on the salon, women, 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 men, he did the whole thing. Oh, wow. Yeah, he was like the baddest, like you wow. know. Yeah, oh, that's and awesome. they, he, you know, he kind of found Here that in passion in Augusta. In Augusta, I'm okay. from Augusta. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's been, you know, it, it became such a beautiful thing. But it, you know, I've been allowed to go places I never would have dreamed. Like I said, I've been um, Samuel Jackson, Samuel Jackson's wife, Sierra. Like mm-hmm. I've, I've been able to touch people that, um, in a way that has been life-changing. It really has. Everybody that I have encountered, and people have different experiences with different celebrities, and Mm -hmm. I always say, like, I can't relate to that. Like, when I met this person, it was amazing, and it was great, but I think it's the energy exchange that happens in that space when you have a clear and pure intention in that space because the most intimate thing that a person has, everything in your life, comes out through your hair. Mm-hmm. Everything. Yeah, what you smoked true. last night, what you drank, what you ate, the cancer, the everything. Right. Yeah. So it's a huge responsibility as a stylist to not just come and have a distance between you and some. Mm-hmm. So 
when it comes to celebrities or people in in spaces outside of our own, it's a it's a huge accountability. Yeah, because we were gonna ask yeah. you like, what were was your experience like your your you know with that that crew like yeah. you know like their expectations because we have like you know clients that act like they are just celebrities. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like you know those you know, I know. I, not like the divas. celebrities, yeah. but, but the divas. you know people yeah. who come in and and expect the, that you know like hey can I come in today like absolutely you know what I mean? and like, I, and or, I think or, that or text you at like twelve a.m. I think that, but that fed from me making the decision to close my circle. Mm-hmm. So once you close the circle, it's a privilege for you to be here. Right. Like I'm not here. I mean, I'm here to service you as well. But it's a privilege for you to be able to be in this intimate space that I have created mm-hmm. for myself. And my skill set is one that you ain't gonna find any and everywhere else. Mm-hmm. So you know, there's a give and take in that. So you kind of have to train people how to treat you. Same way That's with so men, true. teach like, them how to treat you. That's so true. And I had to learn that though because I was spun out. Like, because you will get literally burnt spun out. Yeah, you will get burnt out because yeah. like like um you know like I was telling Diary like you know this job is like we are we're talking all the time and don't mm-hmm. get me wrong I love it like yeah. Yeah. but by the time yeah. Monday comes around like I'm or like Sunday, oh my god like, Sunday I don't can't talk get, to me don't yesterday talk to me. was my day it's and my like, little guy friend was in town and I was <laughs> like sir he was like you've never been this quiet as long as exactly. I've known you and I'm like sir you just it's can't nothing talk just anymore. leave me you like alone. Just give me a minute. I know that this doesn't happen often, but when it does, if, if it's something wrong, I'll tell you. Right. But it's hard. And it's hard to balance that, yeah. especially being a mother. Oh, my and God. And then being, yeah. you know, having a, a, a life. Yeah. I've right. never had a life. And people laugh at me because I'm like, I've never had a boyfriend in my life. Oh, wow. And they're like, hey. what is wrong with you? You must be broken. What is wrong? And I'm and like, no, I'm not broken. broken. <laughs> they I'm always broken. say that, though. They do. But yeah. hairdressers are the most difficult people to date yeah. for that reason. I mean, I'm either flying out or doing this or doing that. And my commitments, I'm already committed yeah. to, to a whole circle of people. And mm-hmm. then when you're doing, like, other things, when people Absolutely. flying you out and right. all that stuff, it just yeah. becomes more complicated. It really is. That, yeah. And so back to Keisha, one thing that I love about our relationship is that when she, when she decided to run, I was mm-hmm. like, okay, so why are you doing this? Because, <laughs> you know, that political world, it's a different world. It it's is. a very different space. And so she said to me, she was like, you know, she had a conversation with God and this was the direction that she was going. I was like, all right, well, I don't, I don't have no disputes right. when people tell me that God told them to move. Right. And so, yeah. you know, it was like, okay, this is what we're going to do. Right. Literally in that process, and we talk about it, and this isn't me sharing salon secrets, but... Like, literally, she lost, like, all of her hair in the front. Like, because oh, wow. stress for her, you know, she did this. It came out this. in her hair. So, like, oh, nobody like, knew. Yeah. Her. Nobody knew during the campaign that we were, like, having to put in tape piece is oh, in. Like, wow. to, yeah. Like, the hairdresser becomes responsible for the whole, you know, oh, when you're a celebrity, made. you become responsible for a person's public appearance. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And that's a huge, like, a huge undertaking. So, when they're going through things, you go through medical conditions and all yeah. these different personal things going on, and you have to kind of compensate. It becomes a huge burden right. to bear. And, and so, we laugh it about out. it now. Yeah. yeah. You got to, like, you know, become like a, a diagnosis. Like, Absolutely. You, had to, you the yeah. doctor of you hair. Like, like, you better you figure, this, figure out this out because we got to make this appearance it. tomorrow. And I can't, right. it can't be anything less than great. Right. And then the world has an expectation of mm-hmm. people that are celebrity. Like, they expect you to be on 100. So when I was, when I started servicing her and then after she won, that was, you know, you become the spotlight. You, she mm-hmm. became the spotlight so much that it was, it was kind of overwhelming for everybody involved. Right. Husband, everybody. And, um... The world would come to me and say, well, we think that she should do this and you need to get her together and you need to get her to just like this. And you need mm. to do because they knew my relationship with her. Yeah. And I'm like, uh, that's not who she is. Right. That's not the image that we want to portray. And that's not the image that we want to try to maintain. Right. Like, right. it's a lot. It's a lot. Right. And to put that burden on someone that is a public servant and that has a responsibility. What were they like, asking? it's too much. What like, they wanted to look you know, like they wanted, wanted her to look more, of... pre- more presidential and wanted her to look more mayoral. And I'm like, I get what, like, it. They grow out like a bob, like the news. No, no, not even just the hair, like oh, her whole wardrobe, whole everything. Because we kind of, you know, mm. was moving in that whole world. Like, wow. there was an image that they had in their minds yeah. of what they wanted her to look like. And I yeah. was like, but that's not. I said, in that progression, will happen in its own time. Yeah. Whenever you force, and I always say, she's not one of the housewives of Atlanta. So she will not be looking like, <laughs> like one of the housewives Atlanta. of Atlanta because at the end of the day, I can't do this every day. Like, right. that's not my you commitment. You can't pull off that daggone look. look and that ain't my that. commitment as a stylist right. to do right. that. Like, if she don't want to be in here and makeup every day. Like, it's too much. You have a job to do. Yeah. And so it's, it, it became a very interesting conversation and an interesting um 
process that was going on. And I'm looking at people like, really? So you <laughs> you think you own her? <laughs> like, you think you own these people? And you right. want them to look how you want them to look, when you want them to look that way? And then as things were progressing, I'm like, just be patient. Mm-hmm. Everybody has to get where they need to be. on their own. It's like, it's like raising a daughter yeah. and yeah. telling her how she needs to be molded. Like, you right. can't just force them into a mold because they're going to rebel. They're going to rebel. they're not going to own it. Exactly. Right. They have to have their own natural progression right. of things. You yes. know, even when you feel like, oh, my God, she's going to hit her fucking head. Right. She's Absolutely. Gonna do it. Like Absolutely. You just gotta go ahead. Yeah. She's it. gonna fall. You gotta She's learn fall. patience. Yeah. But you gotta <laughs> learn patience. You gotta love, learn to love people to get them where they. And you know, right. I, as as a hairdresser, we know what's best. Yeah. Like even oh, yeah. even if it's, I think that you need to grow this color or relax her off of your hair. Mm-hmm. Or I think you need to go natural. Or I think you need to wear your natural color. Oftentimes, those shocks, if people aren't ready for it, you right. have to... You have to, you know, be the one to say it. Them. Encourage yeah, them. Yeah, absolutely. And, and with that being said, like, do you specialize in any type of niche? Like, do you, like, as far as textures? Because you know me, I'm anti <laughs> Yes, I know you're oh, anti-relaxer, oh. and I get one at least twice a year because I can't take it this year. <laughs> no, so you no, think it's too much, girl. I can't. No. So she, here, she's it relaxing. Is, it is I know, I know. Burning ears. I know. Burning. But you know what I what I have learned and what I have what I have accepted in this whole progression of mm-hmm. all the yes, you know, so I've been through everything. I've been uh, through the brandy braids, the holly berry brandy, haircut. Brandy, brandy, brandy. I mean, literally, I've watched the industry change right. so much from the time that my father was doing hair in the 70s. I've mm-hmm. watched him, you know, so he taught me, you know, when the Farrah Fawcett was out in the 70s, I I think. 90% of stylists, if they had to produce that now, couldn't produce it. Mm. Like, it's a skill set. Yeah. And, it, and something that comes along with every trend, that every time yeah. things change, we have to be moldable and we have to be able to bend. Right. So I think that a part of that is being able to bend and be flexible because I do have clients who have made the decision to, to leave the relaxer, to go oh, natural. Okay. I have others that, you know, are partially relaxed now before whatever reason. So everybody, I think, has now found themselves in a need for something different. Right. And it, d- it just depends. Right. And we so always much, say yeah. go by your lifestyle. Yeah, you know? yeah. absolutely. Just Absolutely. The lifestyle. It's, it's but do what's you best are. and what makes you Happy. your best you. Yeah. But your right. best you, the best for your hair, the best for your like. Just don't go skin. natural because that's it's a trend. It's a, right, tr- it's a trend. Right. You right. know, because it doesn't. It just doesn't work. For I have everyone. a few clients, which is a great trend. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I'm not against it. I'm not against it. But right. I do know that there are some people that lifestyles can't, lifestyle that can't support simple. that. Right. Exactly. Absolutely. So we, that's what we said. And you know, I'm I may not be the stylist. for Right. Exactly. You need to go to and that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. And that's me. But but I have I think because. Because I kind of do everything. One thing that it does for me, it keeps me from getting bored. Mm-hmm. So, like, today That's I might true. be, like, any given moment, I might be barbering. And I, and I do television commercials. So, yeah. when I'm working on set, that's a whole different world. Like, it's a whole different world. But I never thought that I would like it or that I would be interested in that world. But what happened, I had a client that I reluctantly took in my 10 years of not taking new clients. Mm-hmm. And she's like, Lisa, I am produce television commercials. You're a barber. You do hair. You do makeup. Like, I really need you on set. Like, we don't have the interesting thing about Atlanta is that there's no talent here. Not mm. that there's no they talent. They fly here. in a lot of their. They fly, they fly in the majority, majority of their of talent. I've heard that. from right. LA and New from York. LA and New York. They do I heard not it. take they a chance on local, local talent, talent in Atlanta. Yeah, it's I an know issue. that they're amazing people, but mm-hmm. I also know that things like professionalism, yeah. things like being able to be flexible and do Caucasian, do yeah. you know and Asian, in, do whatever, right. do all of those salons, and be able to walk into a space and then produce what a director or somebody needs, or take direction and be able to change something up. And like I had, I did a Domino's commercial. Um, or before the Super Bowl and this girl had hair down in the middle of her back and they mm-hmm. were like we want her to look older we want her hair short mm-hmm. I'm like clearly this girl ain't cutting her right. hair so yeah. I had to literally create Paint this yeah create this bob mm-hmm. with wow. her long hair and they were like I'm like, this, well, these are the things that prepare you yeah. for a world that you never know. Right. That you would become I always part heard of. you had to get like union on. Like, no, you know, absolutely not. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're, you can work non union on a union job, mm-hmm. but as a union worker, it's, it has its benefits. It has, definitely has its benefits. And I've, the girl that um, talked me into starting to work in this commercial world, which it has turned into one of my most favorite career paths is mm-hmm. working in television commercials because it's a, it's a whole different world. It's yeah, and it literally the, a whole different world. And it keeps, you know, it, I think it keeps that, you know, that versatility. Yeah, you know? it, it keeps the spirit and, alive. It absolutely and does from that. from getting bored and yeah. burnt out. Right. Like, sometimes I'm like, oh, Lord, if I yeah. do another day, I'm going to drop. Blow out, out. yeah. Like, I know. The fuck out. Yeah. No, it is, really. That's why I think you should <laughs> go ahead and do the barber thing. I'm yeah, I promise the you. And, like, it's a and great break from the... into something yeah. different. Yeah. It's you know? a great break from the monotony. I say that. And I'm like, Lord, these curls, these curls. Everybody wants these curls. Everybody wants the same thing. But that's the thing, 
because you do these curls really well. And yeah, yeah, that's true. You so, know. but then at some point the curls are going to be not the thing. Like right. the same way flat ironing became like the thing, and everybody had to learn. I was selling it, uh, talking to a class right because no one was doing like no. First of all, I didn't even know what a flat iron was. Really? When I first saw flat iron for the first time, I'm like, well, what is this? And I'm like, you I were like... using the, st- the stoves, the yeah. Marcel. It was a Marcel flat iron, the first mm-hmm. one that I used. I didn't even know what that thing wow. was. Yeah. But I like learning new things and right. I like exploring things outside of my comfort zone. And so it just makes you grow. Yeah. And it helps you to become teachable, hmm. right. to teach others. It's good, too. It's it's great good that you thing. have that mentality because yeah. you have a lot of like hairstylists that just stick to one yeah. thing and then the they, want zone. You, they want you to mold into their, yeah. you know, yeah. whatever they have going on. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And so it's good that you, you but know, after you're I mean very... I don't know how long you can do that. You can't do that forever. You know you can right. do it for as long as you can. But that the the reality is things change so fast and people will outgrow you, and you got to be yeah. willing to kind of yeah. like you know. Go but if with you're the that flow. stylist that is done, hey, when the trends change, hey, I, I've been doing this for a while. I've been already studying this. Like uh, clients will come to me and they'll say, you know, well, what do you think about such and such and such? And I'm like, I've never seen that before. Yeah. But I, I do my due diligence to say, let me check it out. But right. I do I think know. that you need to have a niche, though. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, still have, like, I don't a... know what mine is then. I think that, I, think I mean, I cut, I can cut. That. You know what I mean? That yeah. you do a little bit yeah. of yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But cutting you know? is one of my things, too. So you like, do, like, I cut... braided styles? Absolutely and... not. I hate okay. braids. See? So then, yeah. so you, you know, yeah. I do them because I can. Yeah. And, you know, styling. Yeah. Precision, cut and styling is what I would say. So that is still, I think, you know, that, you know, you still should. And I've been coined the texture specialist so okay. I do I do work with a lot of different textures mm-hmm. and I like working with different textures because everything requires something different me too right. you know so yeah textures. so it's an interesting thing working from you know multicultural to right. like men and women to you know people with different issues and things mm-hmm. that are going on so I think that's a that may be my niche yeah I'll take, I'll take that yeah. You, yeah you have a yeah. niche do you feel do, like if someone comes to you would you do like their braids or you just be like no that's no, not no I will I've done I do them and I, I have clients that I service that I do braid styles on it's just not my but like, preference but like like box braids like for instance yeah I can do I can do any of it yeah like, can, skills Absolutely, I can. Right. I is it my imagine. preference? I just don't like <laughs> spending a lot of time. So one thing about me is if you spend more than 45 minutes in the salon, something went wrong. Mm-hmm. Like, right. I'm one of those people, like, you, you we will not be looking at each other for five hours. I can't. <laughs> like, I have no desire to be in. What about your with... colors and stuff? It don't... Well, well, I guess so, on well, natural yeah. hair, it takes... You yeah, know, the processing of that. If it's something that's extensive yeah. that we're doing, you know, and multiple then we do the hydration, yeah, and all I that. do all that. But it, I mean, fundamentally, yeah, you know, I I, I laugh about forty five minutes, but fundamentally, if you coming in to get shampooed and styled, like you shouldn't be in the salon for three or four hours. Yeah, no, and people yeah. complain. That's one of the biggest complaints I hear about yeah. in salon and right. in beauty industry, like the time, the time yeah. of it, because your time is everything. It's Absolutely. valuable, yeah. And I don't want to be in there for all that long. And either. I don't want to be looking at you for <laughs> five hours. Like I don't want to be looking. At nobody for five hours like jeez yeah, yeah. braids, so, yeah. Are, braids are, are and they take a what? lot like a lot on your can body can you even imagine mm-hmm. if I did 12 you know, like hours of braids this, and then you're like you're, the you're, carpet tunnel you know, yeah stuff. Oh, and, and then here's the other thing about that people don't want to pay for your time exactly as a stylist I learned in the aftermath of mm-hmm. me getting into the industry um, how to price and yeah. how to make sure that you're getting your worth, worth and you're not just yeah. working yourself. I'm like, who can afford to do a twenty five dollars shampoo? Like, what are y'all doing? Yeah, that is like, what? Absolutely... You should go work at McDonald's because exactly. right? that's what you're getting paid. It's the exactly. same thing that they get paid at McDonald's. Exactly. exactly. But these girls that are coming out and they're desperate because mm-hmm. they're doing it for money. They don't understand that. Yeah, so, they don't understand. Yeah, that. and then they, you know, it, it kind of devalues, you know, absolutely the, 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 industry. the industry. Yeah, yeah, but then they also have a lot of restrictions. Like, you got to come in with your sh- shampoo and Girl, blow dry and like how. Can yeah, you come? didn't somebody just yeah. say that? Like, one of I don't the understand what that means. That now right. that you, it's How can you thing, even as a, a stylist say you come in already? Because I don't shampoo? know what you have used to prep you this hair. You could use some Pantene exactly. Pro-V. Like, yeah, that's crazy. Like, what? And, that's, and to each his own. If that's that's insane, what, is that what, if though. That's what you want to use at your salon, Pantene Pro-V. <laughs> but you know the outcome is going to be determined by... Right, how you how you prep the hair? Right, right. exactly. You so know. they are not even probably using no clarifying nothing. Girl, like please. what? Yeah, <laughs> anyway. that's all another word. Yeah. <laughs> but I've heard it. Like, oh, you know, absolutely, I have too. Yeah, like you got to come in with your hair shampooed. You know, like make sure you got your pillow. Like, you know, just what? a whole bunch of like. Yeah, that's crazy. absolutely. We that's gotta insane. step it up, you guys. Yeah. Like seriously, like this is a real profession. Like, right. If and you want to get into this profession, you need to be professional. Yeah. You need to take continuing education absolutely. classes. You know, like you can't just watch YouTube and think that you're a stylist. You right. know what I mean? Oh God. Yeah. Like, come on. Be doing it from is, your... It's a real profession. <laughs> and and it 
nice. that, that girl that you sent me that she was yelling from her house. Which she one? Was, she was doing somebody's hair and she was like, ah! <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like it was some lady in her I think house. There was something wrong with her. Yeah, though. no, there was something <laughs> wrong with her. <laughs> she had Tourette's or something. I don't know. Oh, what yeah, was she on. was. And then <laughs> the, 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 the client was really scared. Like, <laughs> She was so, like, and she's videotaping this. Yes, I think somebody I guess her friend was videotaping. videotaping. Yeah, yeah. but it, but then that goes back to, you know, the television and film industry coming to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. This is a big onslaught of work that has come in here, and the pay is very well. Mm -hmm. You know, co commercial involved. work pays me very, very, very well, mm -hmm. and it's the least amount of work I've probably ever done in my life. Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's like been a, hurry, a, a bunch of hurry up and wait. Exactly, but it's also you know when you are required to do the work, you need to be able to you do need, it quickly in out, and you mm -hmm. got to perform exactly. So exactly, it's, it's such like a, a beautiful thing. But mm -hmm. there's so many people that are ill qualified and that'll reach out to me and like I wanna and I'm like my daughter grew up in the salon by default because that's how we sure. it, salon parents are and yeah. she assists me on most of the work. She's not licensed. Mm -hmm. She's she's a she's a um, apprentice. But she's not a licensed stylist, but to be able to work, you don't necessarily need that because really it's just styling. You're not doing professional yeah, services on, on set. But I have my daughter who is more qualified than most professionals that I know. Yeah. Right. Because it's she's insane. been trained. Because she's, yeah. yeah. Because she's basic been stuff. Right. Yeah. That I'm like, basic, yeah. 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 I've hired assistants before. I'm like, really? Right. right. Really? So this is what we're going to do? Doing yeah. Today? Yeah. <laughs> it's disappointing, but I think it's a part of our responsibility as well to... To give back and to yeah, be able and to, to share. And, yeah. and, and share that, yeah. you know, this is how you're supposed to move. Absolutely. Right. All right, you guys. So somebody slipped into our DMs uh -oh. today. And what did they say, Dyra? So it's uh, Candace from New York. She's like, I am in the process of transitioning. I have two, about two inches of hair that's grown. I have noticed a lot of shedding. What should I do? Shedding mm -hmm. meaning mm -hmm. like scalp shedding or is it breaking? It's two different. I guess loss. I'm 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 thinking it, she didn't she didn't specify. specify. Okay. So I'm thinking she's. She, I think it's breakage. Ah, uh, okay. It's because there's a difference, and mm -hmm. people when they say that, I'm like, you know, you often talk have to about ask the hair loss versus, versus right. like versus shedding, shedding because right. your hair sheds twice a year, right? And you shed, you know, and everybody's is different. People right. think that you know they're your your and the and the cycle of growth is different on everybody. So that's yeah. why it takes time to get to know a client to know. What your cycle of growth, growth is, is, how long how is it? Hair. Hair. Yeah, because some people say that my hair won't go past my shoulders, but that may be the life cycle of your uh, hair. Exactly, and your Everyone hair may never grow. Everybody's can't hair, have hair. Indian down their women, back. yeah, Indian you know? women can grow hair for six years. Right. That will their those strands will last for six years, but that's not everybody. It's but I think I, I think people's hair can grow with the proper care. But but, but I think it, that it's still the life cycle. I think that everyone can't have long hair though. It just yeah. depends on like genetically, correct? Like that they can't. They just uh, like they reach a certain uh, like growth, and that's it. Mm -hmm. and you that's know, because mm -hmm. see what happens with hair is this. The hair strand itself has a life cycle. Right. So when you see that little budding mm -hmm. root on the hair, it's actually just from dormant hair where that hair actually, and the, the follicle is actually growing over that hair. And then a new hair comes in and pushes that hair out, which is why when you see shedding, you see that and you see the little bulb on the end. Mm. That's what makes a difference. So the life cycle of the strand or the yeah. follicle can be between two and six years. It just depends on the person. Yeah. So if your follicle lasts for six years, that means you get six years of growth from a strand of hair. Mine may only grow two years. But doesn't it depend on the health of the, the health, person? The health has minimal to do with it. It has more of genetics. Mm -hmm. Genetically is more determined how long a follicle will last. And I learned Unless you have like laser. hair loss issues or something like female pattern baldness or alopecia, then the, those life cycles are interrupted more, more rapidly. But for the most part, a healthy strand of hair, you can... You can induce it to grow a little longer, a little longer and a little faster and a little stronger by, you know, nutrients and, and things that you take into your body, and vitamins like and stuff like that. But for the most part, a life cycle, a person's life cycle is usually kind of determined. And medicine, I think, yeah, I think absolutely. when think. somebody's like taking prescription medication, yeah, that can cause the shedding, that can cause well. the shedding hair loss, mm -hmm. hair thinning, most right. absolutely. And, and, and yeah. when she coming out of braids, who knows, yeah. you know, yeah. like she might have, if she, if she's been like not combing her hair every day yeah. or, you know, like brushing it and then you do decide to mm -hmm. brush it and it's going to look like, you know, that your hair is coming mm -hmm. out. Extreme but really, hair loss, yeah. It's just the hair that's, you know, supposed to come out anyway. And then right. another thing to that is what people don't understand about and a healthy hair is one of my things. Like, that's one of my... Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, paramount. Yeah. Yeah. that's paramount for me. But what happens also with the health of the hair when it's in, in, in 
I call it hostile situations like that. <laughs> the follicle like can't that. breathe. Hostile. Everything needs use air, <laughs> to air and, and sun and rain to grow. Mm-hmm. So when it's not being properly oxygen, uh, getting proper proper oxygen, the follicle is going to start to retard. Right. Right. And that causes most people's like hair loss. And once the follicle is retarded, the hair that grows out is retarded. Right. So <laughs> you gotta get like a thinner, 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 thinner yes, hair. Yes, absolutely. Out, or it's know? a weak and a brittle weak, strand yeah. of hair. And people don't understand that's from that's from damage and that's from misuse and mistreatment of the hair over the years. Right. You just because you're 40 and it's starting to manifest itself, but you've been doing that since you were in your twenties. Right. To your hair. I have a girlfriend of mine who I'm like, I remember 20 years ago, and she's a celebrity um, um, personality. Mm-hmm. And I told her 20 years ago, I said, if you keep doing what you're doing, you will be bald headed. Yeah. Before you turn 40, you will be bald headed. And she came to me when she turned 40 because she's about to be 50 now. I was like, I'm you were right. I should have listened to you. <laughs> so now you just wear a unit forever because you oh, can't, you don't man. have any hair. Yeah. But I was like, I tried to tell you, I wasn't trying to hurt, it. hate. Or trying to like not make you amazing, but I'm telling you, if you you continue to do this damage. So a lot of the girls that are in school, especially in college, these young girls are damaging their hair so bad. By the time they get into the workforce, they won't have any hair. Right. They are wearing units. They're wearing wreaths. They're wearing everything to camouflage the the hair loss. But it comes from years. It doesn't happen overnight. 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 It doesn't happen overnight. Like that, you can wear all those things, but you can do it in a healthier way. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You have have to have somebody. You yeah. have to have somebody who understands what a healthy with. strand of hair looks like, what a healthy scalp looks like, and that will, will um, you know, inform you along mm-hmm. the way. Look, this is not working out for you, or this is, or you need to do this, or you need to do that, and make recommendations instead of you coming in and telling your stylist what you want. Like, I don't even have hair books in my salon. Right. Yeah, like, what are you looking at? Yeah. Don't show me up at your holiday no, uh, unless you want holiday Your hair, your hair right. is going to determine what you get. Correct. Right. Like, when you come in here and Absolutely. I look at your hair, it's like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah. this is what you need. Right. And this yeah, is, but the, you're like, coming to me for that reason. Right. Yeah. But people I'm the are not ready. And when they're going to other places, pop around. You know, like they pop around and they go to like, because the, the person like that's that. in doing the install. Of the hair weave, they're, they're not telling your hair. They, don't they don't just want your nothing. hair weave to look good. Exactly. exactly. They don't get nothing about your hair. They don't care about the health about it. But when you're now ready for your hair to look good, you come to me and you want me to fix this mess. Overnight. And I'm like, not my, not my, not my monkey, not my show. <laughs> right. Like I'm not doing it. <laughs> like, yeah, but what I recommend to her, since she's like transitioning, what I did when I was transitioning, mm-hmm. and that was like from. Uh, color damage. Uh-huh. I just cut it off. Yeah, yeah I yeah. get the big chop. Yeah, cut it all off, and hair grows. It does. Know? It does with and, proper and, health mm-hmm. and like you know yeah. the maintenance and all that. And stuff. and it's just like anything else. It's just like cutting the the uh, a bush down in your yard that's dying or that's looking or a plant. Mm-hmm. You have to cut the dead away. It's the only way to find life is to cut the dead, dead away. Yeah. And then once you have life, you can nurture the life. But you can't nurture life under With the a dead, dead. That's so true. Because then all of the, the, the ingredients nutrients, nutrients are going to the dead to parts. That dead part exactly. And, yeah. exactly. Yeah, it's like that fruit. All. Like, you got to throw away that fruit. Yeah, right. Right. you like, got to clear it away yeah. in order to make for a foundation for growth. And then you can see where you're going to go from Because everything is there. also energy. Like, that yeah. energy from that Absolutely. negative energy from that fruit. Absolutely. Yeah. You, you know, cannot... Dead and living do not live together. They don't. They don't cohabitate. So... We don't have bodies in our homes. We don't have bodies in the hospital. We don't have living, that. You know, I hope they not. immediately take them away right. because life and death don't. You know, they don't. Yeah. They, they can't thrive together. Right. There's no thriving. Yeah. So yeah. So I think that a lot of people don't understand that, and they look to um, unprofessional people to give them advice. Mm-hmm. And then and when it doesn't work the out, too. They just want the look. They want the end game. They want the end game. Mm. They don't really. They don't want they don't, the, not the work. About. Yeah. They don't want like the, everybody else. Like when it comes when to like, I want it and being, I want it now. I want it now. Right. Yeah. Being an I want big hair and I want it today. Right. right. Just like, instant gratification. Yeah. Nobody want to go through the process. Yeah. But I think that, That's you know, our... hopefully we will learn that everything is a process. Yeah. And it's an uncomfortable process. Like I said. But you know, the interesting thing about that, about you saying, I have a client of mine who is, she just, she's in her 30s. And I remember when she was born. I hate to say that. <laughs> but I, I've known her parents my whole life and I'm like Brittany I remember you vomited on me when you were an infant Aww. so now she's this amazing beautiful woman but she did the big chop she has mm-hmm. amazing hair always had great hair and you know that was just inherited and her hair will grow as long but she said in the process of her big chop she said I it was really a challenge for me to love myself oh yeah, oh, yeah. That's it how, was that's very what difficult to me. Yeah. yeah like especially the short yes age. when it was in that middle yeah cause I've, I've that had four, hair that four to six like, inch like, yeah Ooh, she was that's like, in the middle that's yeah, the that four to six inch. Inch. all you dealing with is face okay you dealing yeah. with face but she said I really had a lot of self development that happened yeah. In that process, now she it. has it was absolutely amazing and beautiful. But she was like in the process, like it was definitely a journey and it was yeah. very difficult. And I was like, a lot of people, be, 
because they may be internally um, having difficulties, yeah. they have a hard time owning that right. and yeah. being able to take go through that process. Right. Yeah. So I and guess it could just be where you are in Absolutely. life. Mm-hmm. You know, because I remember chopping off my hair, going through a lot of shit. <laughs> <laughs> and not feeling pretty but right. then like you know once you like start embracing yourself like and you know and you post owning, pictures yeah. on yeah. social media and people are like oh you know like what are you doing to your hair right okay well I'm doing something right and, right. I'm, and right. I must right. be looking right yeah. you know yeah. looking for that self validation yeah. on social media that's, you know that's what I'm saying? it's very yeah. real yeah it's real it's very real okay so let's get into hair. the whatever <laughs> portion okay. um, yeah really quick cause Lisa Ooh. gotta go so we just yes, basically I'm gonna talk this. about yeah so how long do you wait for your partner to get financially get it financially together okay so depending on where we are so let me just share my personal <laughs> that's is, why this i said is this like is such so a crazy good topic right you here because so many women are going through this i think so many women and men you right know, are going through this you think so i think so i, I guess yeah there's I so many women that that have embraced entrepreneurship absolutely yes. and then oh and then have had to women. like digress right. and like build right from, exactly start a new foundation yeah all over all yeah. over the world where now women are just like you know doing a damn doing thing. their thing yeah. and not and forgetting about a man and and sometimes even becoming a financially, you know, in a, fa- a better financial situation than their husbands, you know, right. mm-hmm. or their partners, their you partners. Know? And, and it's I think like, life do you, what do you do? Like, I mean, or do you say, you know, like, you know what? Um, I make more money than him, and it's okay, you know, just long as I don't he has. Know. Like, I think it's a very cha- I think it's a slippery slope, and let me tell you why. Mm-hmm. I have in my life, I've always been extremely successful. I've been. You know, always, always at the top, right. whatever, whatever space I was in, I was always at the top. And men are men who are weak men are attracted to women like that. Mm. And they you like say weak, like what? Like weak like men, alpha men or correct. like, like kind of not alpha beta? men, but those. those yeah. <laughs> The beta men who also <laughs> are looking Chris for, <laughs> gonna be like that. Right. Yeah, you got but more coddling and more more needy than mm-hmm. they are leaders. Mm. So they look for want, women. We want absolutely even us uh, like successful women. Mm. We want somebody who is going to still like what? stand up stand in the saddle, up baby, and, and be yes. like, "This is what we doing." You know and what I mean? like, let me show you how to make this work. Like right. let's let's let me, let's, let me show you. So I, I, this guy that I have been hanging out with. And he going to cuss me off a second. Anyway, <laughs> it's okay. He it's went, has gone talk. through a difficult period before. We met three years ago, but um, in that window, we, we never dated. Mm-hmm. We weren't dating. We didn't, you know, have any interactions during that time. But he um, lost his job. Mm-hmm. You know, has always been hustling, did these, da, 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 and made a decision. Right. Like, this is, you know, this is my walk now. Mm-hmm. And now it's like, yo, like, now that I meet you, I'm in the rebuild. And I got a plan for the rebuild to, to get everything back to where it once was. But... He was like, I've been told that you're not supposed to date during that. During the time oh, that you have plans in place. Yeah, absolutely. A... Oh, that you wow. should not date while you're working out your plan. So basically he was like, know? okay, so he's getting he he's like getting his um his Self back together, together. Like, you know, re- resetting his his barrances. Mm-hmm. And he was like, you know, I've been told that you're not supposed to date when you're doing that as a oh, man. Wow. And I was like, that's good advice. Mm-hmm. And I think I, I respect and I regard that because me as an alpha woman and as a producer, because mm-hmm. I produce for myself, like right. financially, um, I don't really have the patience or the presence to like help you. Not <laughs> right. at 47. You know right. what I'm saying? Like at 47, meet me where I am and we can build from there. Or either you need to be bigger than me. You need to bring me where you are. Because I, I said to him, a king has never built a castle with a queen waiting to move in it. Mm. A queen showed up and the castle was already built and he put her in the castle. Do you think that that, you know, like what if like, do you think that be, you had to get there, though? Absolutely. Now? Oh, yeah. I like, kissed a whole bunch of frogs. Girl. I kissed a whole bunch of frogs. Because, you know, like when you're younger or whatever, you know, the men might not have it together. And you oh, might absolutely. not have it together But either, also, but hear me out. But together. you can see. You can see like when you get potential? a when you get that spirit of discernment as a woman, you can see a man's potential and where he at, is in that process of meeting that potential as opposed to giving him an excuse. Well, you know, his mom and he he was raised in the projects and he have no really. So, he you know. Because you're doing good for where you are. No, sir, I need you here. Right. So what, 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 the gap between here and here, we need to talk about that. 
Or but what if what if you're like okay, so let's just right say here. you're married with your husband, uh, and then and he just different. and he just decides like okay, well now I want to venture out and I want to start this whole new and I'm gonna take a and a, I'm a leap a leap of faith. Oh, I, I can support that. Okay. You know, I can support yeah, that. Yeah, like a career, change, especially if he's already change. been he's already been the provider and the lead, and he's done these things. And he's had dreams. His, he's yeah, he said dreams that. that he's abated because of taking care of the family, mm-hmm. and now we're in a position that we can kind of. All right, like give you some space to go and chase your dream. Right. Now, will you expend the family funds to do this? Absolutely not. You better go figure <laughs> out that. But you know, now <laughs> times have changed yeah, so no, much. Ma'am. Times have changed yeah. so much where, like, you know, because um, obviously now us women are going out and, mm-hmm. and go get in this bag, mm-hmm. right? And then, like, you know, so now we're both in the household working, working, mm-hmm. right? Making even and so, right. So now, like, I, you can't expect me to stay at home and cook every day, you right. know, because that's right. how I it agree. used to be right. before, yeah. right? So it, it has to, the chores have to be half and half, and you know, yeah. we we the have burdens to, have to be bare. Yeah. It's, but the interesting different. thing with me is this, and this is just the the I, I keep saying I'm on my grown woman journey, <laughs> and this, I've been on my grown woman journey since I was forty. But on my grown woman journey, what I realized is that I like being a woman. Mm-hmm. I like being the nurturer and the one who cooks and cleans and manages these things. I just have never had a partner that has afforded me to be able to do that because I would have to relinquish a lot of the things that I do right. in and my you just financial said that capacity. You are a, a alpha woman. Yeah. So do you think that you can take on that role? Oh yeah, girl, you know I'm ready. I mean? are you ready? I'm ready. I, I, and I think I've to... always had that inside of me. Mm-hmm. But but society and and just life and progression pushed me to be great and bigger than life and bigger than the average person in my world. And so I pursued something that I'm like, okay, but it's still not happy. Yeah. Like, I'm yeah. still not fulfilled in that sense. So, like, but I enjoy, like, cooking and I enjoy cleaning and I enjoy being the one who makes a decision about what color to do. And you pay the contractor to paint it. Right. But I'm going to pick out the color. <laughs> right. I don't have to pick out the color, be the kind of find the contractor, you know, the oversee. The, so the, you kind of, like, you, you play your role. As yeah. A, uh, you, so you take a step back yeah. from that. I'm you definitely, want but that. that's new for me. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm not, I'm willing. And the interesting thing is, the the person that I have met in that process is like this is what I've always wanted from a woman just for you to be able to be a woman because I think we're losing our femininity oh, in yeah. our process of becoming to, equal to so. men. I think that's what it is too, and you know, like like we talk about this all the time, mm-hmm. like me and my partner, and we always talk about you know, <laughs> and he's like, well, y'all wanted it, exactly. y'all wanted to go out into the workforce, so there yep. you go. You know what I'm saying? You, now women you, live, you women live. You want me to open this door? You right, don't. Right, I'm like, right. Open the door. Please open the door. <laughs> I want to be a woman. Yes. Yeah. And he's like. You know, y'all, I mean, y'all ask for this. And then yeah. we, we want to kind of like, so it's kind of like contradicting an oxymoron yeah. in the sense where, yeah. you know, like sometimes we're okay, so I want you to open this door and I want you to take out the garbage and I want you to, you know. Um, to lead. You know, to, to lead, lead. But also it's like, you know, we, we don't, we are like, rough you know in the sense yeah. like we've lost like hard said, around the edges we are lost and we our can't femininity. Be that yeah. way. you yeah. know what i'm saying you can't have both because yeah. like you just... can't put on a hard hat and a and a and some lingerie okay <laughs> right, like exactly. that's why i view it as literally like <laughs> y'all want to wear a hard hat and you want to have on some like you look you look crazy you need to choose your like what side of the fence you want to play on right. and I agree. you got to own that and i think as women we've we stopped nurturing that part of us because now it's like you know, you either butt naked with your booty out and titties out, and and that's what that's not femininity. Yeah, that's that's you. You know, really, just, we we we're giving away everything of our power. Uh, yeah. That was our power as women. Men don't exactly. want to see it. Men are desensitized to the point that they don't even look right, at women so and see women as beautiful when they see that. And I had a friend of mine who paints women's asses uh-huh. for a living. Like that's what he does. He started the, an artist beautiful art that he mm-hmm. does and so he tmz called him a couple of weeks ago and they asked him like who what celebrity would you love to paint there as and he said kim kardashian of course you know they're like right. okay. but i've used to date him so i've known that he's been in love with kim kardashian since since um ray j <laughs> <laughs> and then he they said well what about beyonce he was like no she's a queen i don't even look at her like that oh, oh wow, wow. So it's like almost like this that? Virgin Mary, like about, you know, you know, complex sometimes yeah. that men have. We like think they see that, that, that this is this what is they see, see, but right. no, 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 they don't want. They don't want that. Not in when they want to make you a queen or they want to value you. Oh yeah, of course. It's not the yeah. same. They like that. Shit, so we are, no, they, they like, like it they on like the it. surface, right. Right. but like nobody wants. To, yeah, yeah, like nobody wants to like not a stand up. You don't want to wife that. Correct. Yeah. Some Correct. men well. don't want to wife. Exactly. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but men who are weak want to wife. Men who are weak and they need 
to post up and, and, and need to pop somebody up in front of them. And a, and a booty they want to wipe quick. that. Yeah. But a real man, a real, especially black men, like they are strong, beautiful men. And they have been, I think, depleted and defeated so much because we don't even value them anymore. Because yeah. we like, hey, I got more, I more than you. Me. Like I got, I mean, I do too, but yeah. for, for the most part, I'm mm-hmm. like, so what you got? Yeah. You know, so you buying drinks or what? You like, you ain't what? got money to buy drinks? Yeah, and, uh, you know? and, and it's, and it's yeah. been in our culture, too, now. It's almost like prostitution. Like, I saw Absolutely. something. Um, wow. thing was like, um, what is It was like a meme that said something about, like, um, I'm going to, like, if you want me to finish, like, coming or something like that, mm-hmm. then you need to, like, pay for it or something wow. like this. So I'm screwing it up, but like <laughs> it was basically like if you this was just a preview. If you want wow. the whole thing, then you need you to gotta pay write for a check. It. Wow. You gotta write a check, and I mean it's in the music and everything. It's everywhere. It's like it's you know, everywhere. like it's you know, everywhere. you gotta have a bag and da da da. I hope it changes. So it's almost like you I mean, know, but we I think that's women, what men are thinking that we you that know, they got that, to do that they have and, to do. And men, here's the interesting thing: do y'all watch Red Table Talk? No. Um, I've okay. watched the, I've, the I've first watched few. Yeah. I have fallen in love with Jada. I know. I, I love Jada. Jada. First, I've always loved Jada, but I've fallen Jada. in love with her in a different way in, in this truth that she is, 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 has been speaking and mm-hmm. been attesting to. But what she said in that Aisha Curry interview mm-hmm. with the Currys, and not, it wasn't just Aisha, but the, the family, she said that men are attracted to beautiful women because prehistorically, mm-hmm. or just, just from, like, our foundation and this why we were created was for procreation. Right. So when a man looks at a woman, he looks at her and wants to have sex with her because their ideal is procreation. Procreate. That's right. what we were so, here for. To so produce. It, the spin down of that to our to our time now is that men financially that is what makes them that primitive part of them that makes them powerful. Right. But the and so men look at women because they're they're beautiful, but women look at men that are powerful and that's right. what they're attracted to. We look to. at them right. for their resources. Correct. We they How look can at he us provide? for um, you what know, type of husband can he be? Right. What kind type of life can he give what me? Can right. I have? Which is it's why everybody goes after the same guy. When right. you see a successful and a stand up dude, everybody chasing the same, the same guy. guy. Like but it's this for guy the over here has the potential and he really is, but he can't compete with a you know, with a Michael Jordan or with a LeBron James, mm-hmm. LeBron James money way different than the brother who go to who works at IBM's money. Right. So he doesn't feel like he has a has a, even the, the likelihood mm-hmm. of being measured as being a powerful man. But they they we've lost that whole yeah, sense of right. what power is because power isn't just about money. money it's about how you're going to provide, protect, and care for this family. Exactly. Right. So I and think, I think it was that it kind of gets kind of like, that. you know, misconstrued yeah. as like, you know, we see it, you know, we see the successful man with the bag or whatever, you know, as like, oh, he's going to, you know, yeah. he's going to. Because he provide material. Material, right. But then that doesn't, but he he's might devoid be, emotionally. He's exactly. devoid. He's gone. He's missing. And do you like, want that? Like, right. I don't want a man. Like, women, women have been disillusioned to think that they do. Right. Because they think that there is promise and there's happiness. I was like, I know people who are the most. The most wealthy people that I know are the most miserable. Miserable. Yeah. Miserable. They man ain't there. They probably wiped up Worrying in about Vegas, who he so will. Because when he goes, and what, that's what Jada said. Jada was like, when Will goes out in the world, I'm with him. And I'm like, yo, like you around all these beautiful women. Mm-hmm. I feel sorry for you. Like, mm-hmm. how do you make the how decision do you, yeah, to, not to do this? Because primitively, it's you have it in you to, to, to go to, after that yeah. and, yeah. and to conquer the to woman. Conquer. For the for the sake of procreation right so that's why you're making babies out here and doing all of these yeah. things like it's a whole it's psychology innate. behind it it's innate. exactly yeah. yeah but she was like at the same time like he know i don't play the radio so he know <laughs> like hey right, you gotta sit yourself sit. but i was like you know if women understood that i think that we men men have allowed it to to feed that lie that they've been told that men are supposed to have multiple women no you're not mm-hmm. you're just supposed to be a, like that's your instinct to be able to look at women and well, you, you want to be you want to procreate you want to like Absolutely. you know like spread your seed around yeah, exactly. like, right. that, like that's, that's like, your nature yeah. that's your nature right you know that you want like that this, men this, are like you know predators and right want yeah. To, and that like, is, yeah. yeah like and i think it's a choice too you know, like you kind of got to go you know kind of go in against that nature, if you want to settle down with one woman, you know, yeah, because like you can have, but, but a woman has the capacity to have a baby a year, yeah, so you can make as many babies with your <laughs> wife as you want to, right? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you ain't got to have four babies coming out every year, like right. who does that? But you, I mean, and you, you can't have to like, provide for them, just, yeah. and well, not, the flip side is you not, also have to be able to provide, but so not, you have four not, babies, you got to provide, but let's not even talk about yeah. providing because providing you have like welfare you have all these yeah resources. So that ain't you as a but, man provide no but but let's talk about like that 
knowledge that you're going to feed to that child. Yeah. You know, because yeah. A, a and how child, you pour into. Yeah, yeah, that child needs both parents. Mm-hmm. So it's not more so about like financially. Just that. Yeah. And it's the more presence. So, you want that presence. presence. You can't Absolutely. be having like a whole bunch of kids and be in all their. And kids. just Absolutely. a check. And all you are right. is a check. You Absolutely. know what I'm saying? Because right. that's Absolutely. not. Money is not everything. It's more so like it's scary to have children now and raising. Like I say, I'm raising a son. Like, Ooh. you know, so it's like everything that I'm trying to feed him into like, you know. It's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. So you're, you're create, you're, it's a whole nother you're human being. You're molding another human yeah. being. That right. You have it's a to lot. It's the biggest responsibility you'll ever have. Yeah. And I say that about my daughter that I'm just, it was God and grace that brought us to, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to the place that we are. And I'm like, I'm grateful. We have an amazing relationship, but it was, it was borderline. Mm-hmm. Like one of the two of us ain't gonna survive. Right. <laughs> For a long time, <laughs> it was. I'm telling you, I, I know. Like, I, know. Nah. I got two girls and a boy. Yeah, I don't like told me nothing, nothing about this part no. of the game. I, but, exactly. You know, God and grace will help you. So get you through things that you, you would can, never you imagine. Cannot. But a boy yes. in this world. Oh yes. yeah, it's hard. I don't even care. Like I talk to Keisha all the time because she has. You know, Keisha has four children, and That's all of her awesome. children are adopted. Oh, she's really? four adopted children. Yeah, oh, so wow. she has three boys and one girl. The, the youngest two are girl and a boy. Um twins mm. but her oldest son she's like all i talk to him all the time about the fears that he has to have and the and it, to just walk in the world mm-hmm. like this world is not kind to boys that look like you yeah. no. so you i have to prepare him all the time to the point that you don't spend time nurturing and and guiding them to be mm-hmm. what you want them to be because you're too busy telling them what they don't need to be and how you don't need to act exactly. how you don't need to you yeah. know how you got to be careful with this but you don't get a chance to tell them like go be great right. go explore go take chances yeah. go go backpack you know? over Europe yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> all that skydive but it's a that's lot. Just something yeah. so it would do backpack <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I can see her now <laughs> yeah but it's it's tough I think that we you know I think that we can be gentle with men who mm-hmm. are financially finding themselves. However, I like we can't that. compromise. Financially finding yourself. Yeah. But we can't, but there's no compromise. And I think yeah. that, you know, the hard part is being that rigid person that don't that don't play the radio, that don't give you no out, that men are frightened of. Mm-hmm. You know, you want the passive girl that just says, oh, it's okay. It's okay. And okay. we're going to be homeless on the street? No. Right. Do you want the woman that's like, no, baby, like, you got to get up and go get this. You got to like, get gonna, this. Go to get, like, you're going to have to turn, uh, what yeah. is it, Fortnite off. <laughs> okay. Oh, gosh. <laughs> and I need you to get your ass up. <laughs> And go get that and bag. get this bag for us. Yeah. yeah. And I got your and bag. stop it. But there's no, like, ain't no cowards. <laughs> ain't no cowards in my world. Right. You so, uh, last question. Do you think that, um, like, in the next five years or so, there there's going to be, like, a shift in, you know, seeing more women on the top? You know, I know. Absolutely. I think mm-hmm. the Michelle Obamas have, have changed the trajectory of what femininity and power. And I think that we, ha- we realize that men you know, have dropped the ball for centuries now. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. you know, and I, it, we've always known that the women were the backbone and women were right. behind that in some capacity. But I think now there's been a, a window that opened yeah, and all the birds are flying out. Like mm-hmm. all the girl birds are flying yeah. out and going. And I like, see that so girls. much. That like so too. many like badass yeah. women, especially now with Instagram, that it connects mm-hmm. to all, all of us. Mm-hmm. Right. So you get to see it. Like, like so front, many like know? successful women, women. And out here doing a thing, yeah. like, you know, working. And even if you don't you know, work for think... yourself, if you, you know, if you just like, yeah. you know, doing your thing. Right. Like, like wearing you corporate, corporate and wherever. Yeah. Whatever. Working nine to five, go home, take care of the kids. But I think it has a lot to do, too, with fundamentally what has happened in this country with men, especially black men versus white black women, mm-hmm. we became fearless a long time ago. Yeah. Like, cause we've been battered and bruised. We don't care. We, we, we came from a beating right. and still cooked an amazing meal and took mm-hmm. care of, you know what I'm saying? The they, meals when, of the world. When the beatings mm-hmm. happened for them, they had to go and they had to cower for a while right. and figure it out and, and get themselves back together. For us, we never had downtime. We never had an opportunity to let go and to relinquish our power or responsibility. Them babies were still hollering right, while you was right. getting beaten. Right. Them babies were still hollering. They And so you had to nurse them. You had to do... There was never... We never got a way out. We yeah. never got a pass. Mm-hmm. When daddy decided he couldn't take this because the family was too much, mama ain't. Mama was still there. No, mom is just figuring gonna make, out. It, make it yeah. happen. I, I so just true. did a... Um, a uh, say yes to the prom dress with the Atlanta Hawks, the uh-huh. mothers and um, wives of the Hawks players. And there were homeless girls that mm. we were taking care of. And so we provided prom hair and makeup services yeah. for them. And there was this young girl that I ended up doing. And she was a heavy set girl, beautiful girl. Mm-hmm. But you can tell when she walked into a room, there was something about her that was just, it was just undeniable. 
But she was a girl that everybody would probably pass off because you're, you know, the heavyset girl. They didn't even know if they would have a dress for her because right. of her size. She came in, she found this amazing dress. Anyway, long story short, her mother reached out to me after I did her makeup for the prom and was like, you don't understand that you've been an angel. You don't know what it's like to be abandoned by your husband and be left with four children sleeping in your car. Mm. Wow. I was like, but mama had to figure it out. Daddy yeah. went wherever and, and got some crack right. or another woman or whatever he did and took the easy way out. But they lived in Henry County and lived a great life. Mm -hmm. And that man abandoned her and she ended up having to bear the burden of those. So she was like, so my daughter didn't want to go to prom. She was so beaten down because of what has happened in our lives yeah. that she didn't want to. She said, but y'all made it so that she enjoyed herself. She had a beautiful part. She was so amazing. And I was like, you know, that's so interesting that we we still are yeah. the burden bearers of mm -hmm. our communities yeah. Yeah. as women. Yeah. So at some point, we have to kind of, I think, figure out how to teach men yeah. that you don't have an option to leave. Right. It ain't an option for you not right. to stay yeah, here. Yeah, because, I mean, because when we have the babies, we don't get to leave. Like, no. we don't get, it's, we're They're stuck. yours. They're yours, you know? I mean, we could be that person. Oh, and I know some women that have. I know right. some yeah, women I that mean, have. But, but, yeah, but, but fundamentally. Yeah. Yeah, but the they're going to be like, oh, you see that mother? Yeah. They're not going to say, oh, you see that father? father? It's just the norm. It's the norm. You know? But I think we have to stop letting brothers off the hook. Like, yeah. men that I know, you can't even come in my world, in my circle, and I don't. Like, you got kids? Where they at? Right. So, what you, like, so what's your relationship exactly. with them? Do you, How you doing? Like, exactly. Hey, and we need to you ask cannot those questions. Come around and be, even if you are a blended family, it's like, you know, dude, look, you got to step it up. Oh, yeah. Like, Absolutely. you made this child okay. You know, he, they're here. So now what you going to do? Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? And I'm going to support those, you. Those I'm going to support, support you getting it right. It's gonna, okay, let's let's sit down with the, you know, with, with your baby mm -hmm. mom or whoever and let's figure this shit but, out. Uh, but also, some certain women, in fairness to the men, certain women out here oh, yeah. are crazy. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> because they're still, because they're still that. stuck in their ways, yeah. and they still either want the same thing, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they want their baby daddy, right, and they don't, they, they need to get out of their way That's in right. order for that for that child to, you know, the yeah. best, you know. But I see our brothers stepping up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I see the brothers stepping up. I think I have so too. Yeah. Yeah. In, in the younger generation too, I feel Absolutely. like you know I've seen a lot. So we have to keep encouraging yeah. them. <laughs> yeah, keep encouraging. Well, them. But yeah, great. The last one. So we're gonna our last segment is we calling you. Wow. Uh -oh. Right, we calling you. <laughs> uh oh. So we saw. I sent to soy. Um, somebody uh, just burning mess. like a barber burning some man's Ooh. hair. Have you everybody seen sent those? it to me. Of course, everybody like, sent that to me. Like Lisa. On? So what you think about this? Like what is sensationalizing the, every like, everything. Why? Has and then he was like. <laughs> no, when the fire yeah, wouldn't go so out, hard, yeah. I don't think that. I think it went wrong. Yeah, the, it <laughs> went I'm eventually. Out, like, what is I know that? what happens to singed hair. Right. Like it doesn't. Like, I don't it know. It why. looks crazy. It's like you know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't understand. I think it's just a sensationalizing trend. of like doing something. But, that's what, wild but what's the point of doing it? I have no idea. <laughs> you have shears. It's a wild factor. Right. <laughs> it's a wild factor. So like the guy that was cutting hair with the with a um with a sword. It's just. It's just sensational. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen yeah, you saw that video. Yeah, you yeah. seen yeah. the sword or some extra or what? Like no I'm gonna call another person out, but you know, some people wear blindfolds like to cut hair, like yeah, just too whatever. much. Yeah. Just doing. Too I think because our creativity much. has gone away, and because it has, we just like at this point, you just grasp some that straws, trying to figure out something that right. uh, a wow factor instead it's of just, saying just doing shit for life. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Basically. Like Basically. It, it ain't like just, that is just hilarious. use some shears. Please. I want to see what his hair looks like in the aftermath. Me I want to see like show show after you put the fire out. I want to yeah. see what it looks like. What it yeah. looks like. Yeah. Yeah. Poor guy. Crazy. Poor little. I know the little <laughs> He got beat up by the barber. <laughs> First of all, other than that, is he was gonna have third degree burns on his scalp. Right. Yes, that is insane. Like, wh why take that risk? It's absolutely. But insane. anyway, right? <laughs> yeah, we out here. Um, we're not burning people's hair here. <laughs> no, we using shears. And, absolutely and she's not. Using, you know, clippers yes, and shears. Is, I okay. got a whole lot of tools, and yeah. one of them is not a fire I'm just torch. Doing too much. <laughs> <laughs> all right, y'all. So, um, where can they find you, Lisa Pope? Oh, I am um the unfamous Lisa Pope. So I'm unfam <laughs> unfamous, and I like it that way. But I'm, I'm Lisa Pope. One word on. Um, Instagram mm -hmm. trade secrets with Lisa Pope is my um, business page on Instagram and I'm Lisa Pope the new page on um, Facebook okay, okay. Find me so on check it. her yeah. out and y'all know where to find us where can they find us Soy? We, they can find us on YouTube um, iTunes podcast and um, SoundCloud yeah, and if you, if you guys have any uh, hair um, questions, let us know. Slip into the DM. Yep. Love it. Thank we you out. guys so much for having oh, me. It's been you. an absolute pleasure. It's, I love it. I thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you thank for coming. You. All right, it's been real, y'all. All right, we out. Peace. <laughs>